Guys, in this video, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk with you all about calibrating pressure sensors. Uh, we're going to be looking in particularly at this uh, static pressure sensor here. Of course, this is a Cetra Model 264, but this same type of calibration, this same type of setup is going to be common with a lot of different types of sensors. It is common for discharge pressure sensors. Uh, it is common for differential pressure sensors, that sort of thing. And it's just a little bit of information for you all to help you to better understand how these work and how they get the information into your system. This particular model is available in a few different forms. Uh, you can get this where it will be giving you an output signal of either voltage or current, and there are different ranges of it depending on the type of uh, sensor that you choose. For example, if we look here at the data sheet, we can see some of the uh, electrical information here about this particular device. We see that for the voltage output uh, for the particular device, some of your options are going to be a 9 to 30 volts DC or a 0 to 5 volts DC. Uh, if you are using a sensor that has a current output, you can see that your option is that it is a 4 to 20 milliamps. So how then does that relate to the pressure? Well, let's look a little further into this. You can see here some of the options available as far as the different pressure readings. You can get it as low as 0.1 inches of water column all the way up to 10 inches of water column, just depending on your application. Uh, standard air handler, you may use a two and a half inch or even a 10 inch pressure sensor. It just really depends. We've got them in all different ranges, it just depends on the particular air handler. But to break this down a little bit more and to help it uh, be just a little bit better for us to understand. Let's just assume that our sensor is rated for 10 inches of water column. How then does that electrical output relate to that particular sensor? Well, at if we're using a sensor that uses voltage, uh, 0 to 5 volts here for example, when the voltage output of that sensor is at zero volts, then there should be zero pressure, zero inches of water column. Uh, by contrast, if we have 10 inches of uh, water column for our pressure, we should have a voltage output of about five volts DC. That is how the two kind of correlate with each other. Your maximum output should be equal to the maximum pressure of your sensor. Uh, to, br to break that down a little bit more, if you have a 4 to 20 milliamp sensor output and you have a 10 inch water column sensor at uh, no pressure, the sensor should be giving you an output of 4 milliamps and then again at 10 inches of water column pressure, the sensor should be giving you an output of 20 milliamp. That same type of thing can be translated on down the line. Uh, even to the one that's half inch of water column, same principle. Uh, at zero inches of water column, you would have a four milliamp signal. At half inch of water column, you would have a 20 milliamp signal that is scaled on each of these different sensors in comparison to the different output choice that you have uh, in your system. How then does that relate to the programming? There's a couple of different ways and what uh, we're gonna look at is a couple of air handlers. Again, we're gonna stay with pressure sensors uh, for this particular explanation. This is a program for one of the air handlers that we have. This is the input for the discharge pressure sensor. 
Of course, I'm using the GX9100 software uh, for those of you guys who are familiar with it. Now, this is the data for this particular input. And we can see here the type of active input is selected at one. And if you're familiar with the GX9100 software, I uh, go down to the bottom here and it tells me my options. Type of input for this particular device is a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. We have type of input 1, 4 to 20, that's what, what we have here. If that was selected at 0, then we would have a 0 to 10 volt signal. But this particular sensor is a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. And the range for this particular sensor is going to be up to five inches of water column. We can see that value here on this particular device. This is where we have uh, our entered our values. If we were to replace the sensor, this would be where I needed to change that uh, value at. If it was a zero to 10, I would need to put you know, 10 in this position here. Now, here we are in CCT, uh, the controller configuration tool. For those of you all who are familiar with that, we're going to look at the same thing here. Uh, I'm just gonna double click into my input, and what we can see here is I have my sensor. This particular sensor has a four to 20 milliamp signal. That's what this input is set up for. Uh, my range is, of course, zero to five inches of water column for this particular sensor. These are going to be the main values for this particular device. If I was using a different value, if I was using a different sensor, say a zero to 10 inch of water column sensor, I would have to go in and edit and change this value right here to a 10. And then once I saved that, it would give me the correct value. If you have a mismatch in your system between what your program sees or what it thinks it sees and the actual sensor, you're not going to read a correct value within your system. For example, if you have a system that is set up for a zero to five inch sensor, and you have a zero to 10 inch sensor on it, you're not gonna get an accurate reading. Uh, your supply fan is not gonna control accurately. You're not gonna get the airflow that you need, that sort of thing. So that is some of just the basic principles for what you're gonna need to make this type of system work. Uh, this is just a quick video that I wanted to do to kind of give you just a little bit better understanding about how these work. Again, this is very similar to a lot of different applications. Uh, for this particular application, I was looking just at this one pressure sensor, and but there's many other applications that it will work with just fine. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Check out the links down in the description. Uh, I've got some links to some of the various tools that I use uh, in my day-to-day -day applications, my day-to-day -day troubleshooting and that sort of thing. But guys, thanks for watching the video. Just let me know if you have any questions, and we will see you next time.